Hey, Matt Man's back. Today I want to talk about the wisdom of stacking silver. Now, if you're into the silver and if you want, if you think you're going to strike it rich with this stuff, don't bother. You're better off playing the stock market or going to Vegas for that matter. Um, silver, I view as a hedge against inflation and as a monetary unit that can replace fiat currency in the event of an SHTF situation. And we're going to talk about both of those. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is it as an investment and as a hedge against inflation. A story everybody pretty much knows who stacks silver is that this 1964 quarter, in 1964, would have bought you a gallon of gas. Today, this same quarter, its value will buy you that same gallon of gas. And today, silver's high today, it'll buy you a candy bar too. So... That's the value of, of the silver. So silver holds its value over time. Now, on the investment side, it bounces up and down. Silver can be a part of any healthy investment portfolio. I don't view it that way. I view it more as an insurance policy. You need to ignore all the videos there on YouTube that present outrageous claims for silver. In just the last few weeks, I've seen one video that told me silver was going to go down to zero before the end of the summer. And there was another video out there that said $100 silver by the end of the year. Want to do is hold it over the long period and hope you never have to use it. An insurance policy, not really an investment. More against the hedge against inflation because it holds its value. And because this is the medium of choice among preppers. And the more serious the prepper, the more they want this stuff. So... I keep flipping it like it's a coin. So this is actually a metal. This is just a piece of silver. Metals will always flip horizontally. This is called a metal alignment. Coins in the United States will always have what's called a coin alignment and you flip it vertically. What these coins are, are 90% silver for the most part. We do have a little 40%er here. Put that off to the side. So we going back to silver holding its value, all this constitutional silver, this 90% silver, is universally recognized. Everybody knows it has value. In an SHTF situation, the first thing you actually need is a wad of cash. This comes straight from FEMA and from the Red Cross on their list of things to be prepared for is you need to have a wad of cash for the first week, 10 days, fortnight of any kind of situation. If it's a weather situation, it'll probably be localized. You don't really have to, uh, you know, last few days. And that's kind of what those lists are geared for. But right on top of their list, they'll tell you, have a lot of cash. Um, if the power goes out, there's no electronic transactions anymore. And your, your cash will be the only thing that will allow you to get any kind of goods and services. Stores lock their doors when the power goes out. But eventually, they're going to have to open them up again, regardless if they have the power, because they got to get rid of their, their perishables. Uh, they don't want to lose all that money. Now, insurance will probably cover part of it. But if it's a nationwide thing, stores will be on just a cash basis. 
And that's where your wad of cash comes in. And that can last, you know, going into a week. But eventually, if that keeps on going, if that goes on, cash is going to disappear. It'll get up, be all in the hands of the people that have the product. And uh, there's not a whole lot of cash out there. What if you need to have someone with a chainsaw take a limb off of your, your roof? Uh, you have the power to do that now. So what could cause a long-term SHTF situation? Well, there are a lot of possibilities. First one that comes to my mind is a cyber attack. If the internet is taken down successfully, it may take months to get back up again. And it might not even be the same internet we have today. Kind of extreme, but I think eventually it's going to happen. Ted Koppel, formerly of Nightline, wrote a book called The Day the Lights Go Out. And he finds that it will be inevitable that will happen. Another thing that can happen is through nature. And the biggest one, of course, is the Carrington event. If we have a Carrington event, it could literally fry every integrated circuit on the face of the earth. Think about that. That could knock us back to the 1890s. And it would take months, years to recover. I don't even know if you don't want to live through that hellscape. So for those of you that don't know, the Carrington event was a severe solar storm that happened before the Civil War and basically destroyed the telegraph system. And that was the only real electronic thing they had in the day. Um, the same thing today well, would wreak havoc. And then they came up with a new event called the Miyake event that is like many times of magnitude worse. So something to look forward to. <clears throat> okay, I do want to point out that I am not a investment advisor. So everything I'm telling you here, you know, this do your own research. See if this is right for you. But, you know, the um, uh, I believe that cash is a fiat currency and will wane over time, and the silver is going to hold its value. All right, so what kind of silver should you buy? Well, I kind of got the example right here on the table. I like generic silver rounds. It's just a, uh, a chunk of one ounce of silver with a minimal premium on it. You uh, got to pay a premium for silver these days, and they're, they're just sometimes sky high. Um, on these, I think right about now, three to four dollars an ounce to buy, and then a dollar or two premium on it when you sell. So, not too shabby, still expensive. Uh, junk silver is. Uh, same thing. The premiums are sky high. Um, lately, I've seen that um, when they it's melt plus nine dollars an ounce, and if they uh, buy it from you, it's like melt plus six dollars an ounce. So um, you know the money's there, but uh, you know the the premiums. It's just a reflection of demand, and it reflects the real price of silver. So you know. Basically, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And the premium is the price you pay to hold it. Again, an insurance policy. Insurance costs money. Okay, if you like this kind of programming, uh, if this helped you out at all, please subscribe to the channel and share it and do the things I, you need to do to help me launch this channel. Um, I appreciate you, all you watching. And come back next time. Matt Man's out. Bye now.